In a highly significant finding, the First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, has been cleared by an independent inquiry of breaching the ministerial code. Her supporters say that the outcome, which comes after weeks of mounting pressure on the First Minister, should end the calls for her to resign. The inquiry, led by the prominent lawyer James Hamilton, examined claims that Ms Sturgeon deliberately misled Parliament following allegations of sexual harassment made against the former First Minister, Alex Salmond. A separate report by a committee of MSPs is expected to be published tomorrow morning. Our Scotland editor, Sarah Smith, has the latest. Nicola Sturgeon knew her job could depend on this report. She herself asked James Hamilton to investigate her actions. His verdict? On all four counts, she did not breach the ministerial code. I have been very clear in my own mind that I acted appropriately and did not breach the ministerial code, but that, while that might be uh, necessary, is not sufficient. It's important to the Scottish people that they have independent verification and adjudication of that, and that, of course, is what they now have. The first big question, what did she know and when? On the 2nd of April, he informed me about the complaints against him. Nicola Sturgeon originally told Parliament the first she knew of complaints against Alex Salmond was on the 2nd of April when he told her about it in a meeting at her home. She later had to admit she'd forgotten about a meeting on the 29th of March with Salmond's former Chief of Staff in which he says the complaints were discussed. James Hamilton said this resulted in an incomplete narrative of events. But he accepted this omission was the result of a genuine failure of recollection and was not deliberate. Did Nicola Sturgeon break the rules by not recording the meetings she had with Mr Salmon to discuss the complaints against him? The report states, It would have been impossible to record such meetings or discussions without a risk of prejudicing the proceedings or interfering with their confidentiality. Alex Salmond asked Nicola Sturgeon to intervene in the sexual harassment investigation as he believed the government was acting unlawfully and it was her duty to stop a flawed process. She refused to intervene. And James Hamilton has concluded, I do not accept that the First Minister's decision to follow the terms of the procedure amounted to a breach of the ministerial code. When Alex Salmond successfully challenged in court the way the Scottish Government investigated the complaints against him, he was awarded over half a million pounds. He insists Nicola Sturgeon's government should have conceded the case earlier to save public money. James Hamilton says he has found no evidence whatsoever that the First Minister acted improperly or in breach of the ministerial code with respect to Mr Salmond's petition. The Hamilton inquiry hasn't looked at a number of key areas, uh, further potential breaches of the ministerial code, including how Nicola Sturgeon's government so badly let down women at the heart of this. The Scottish Conservatives believe Nicola Sturgeon has breached the ministerial code. She has not been truthful with Parliament or the people of Scotland and she cannot continue as First Minister. For months, Nicola Sturgeon has faced accusations of lying and calls for her resignation. She's always maintained she was telling the truth. Today's verdict that she did not break any ministerial rules will allow her to say she's been vindicated. Let's go live to Edinburgh and uh, Sarah's there for us now. Well, Nicola Sturgeon's supporters, Sarah, are very clear. They think that she's now basically past the worst and possibly that she should face no other cause to resign. What's your reading of it? Well, that's not likely to be the case. I mean, there are a couple of lines in this report which will make uncomfortable reading for Nicola Sturgeon. James Hamilton says that her explanation for why she didn't recall that meeting on the 29th of March will be greeted by suspicion and even scepticism by some. And in another part of the report, he says specifically, it's up to the Scottish Parliament to decide whether or not they were in fact misled. Now, in the Scottish Parliament tomorrow, there will be a vote of no confidence in Nicola Sturgeon, one that it seems she is very likely to survive. But we're also going to see the publication of another report tomorrow, this one from the MSPs who sit on the Holyrood Harassment Committee. And we know from leaks of their report that they are going to conclude that she was inaccurate in some of the evidence that she gave to them. So whilst Nicola Sturgeon can say that she has been cleared by an independent inquiry, her opponents are unlikely to accept that as the last word on this not least because we've got an election coming up in Scotland in just over six weeks' time. Sarah, many thanks again. Sarah Smith, our Scotland editor there uh, at the Scottish Parliament. And just a quick reminder to find out more about the story, the background to the story, analysis by Sarah and colleagues, go to bbc.co.uk forward slash news, or, of course, you can access all of that on the BBC News app.